Next, we will visit with Larry Beamy, who will show us his beautiful Stinson Reliant. Dr. Beamy, who spent a number of years as a flight surgeon in the Wisconsin Army National Guard, prefers to be called Larry. I'm sure you've seen pictorial articles that purport to show the similarities between different breeds of dogs and their owners. Well, along that line, I suggest to you that this elegant 1943 V77 Stinson Reliant that Larry Beamy has restored from a basket case is the perfect match for this gentleman physician. This is the kind of airplane that seems to be always dressed in a tuxedo. Here's Larry Beamy and his Stinson Reliant. Hello, my name is uh, Larry Bamey, and what you see here before you is a Stinson V-77. Uh, the Stinson V-77 was built by Stinson Aircraft in 1943. Uh, in 1943, these were built primarily for the military. The government sold these for $1,500 apiece in 1944 as the war closed down. Uh, most of these had seen service in England during the war as uh, navigation trainers and utility aircraft. After they were civilianized, uh, they didn't look much like military aircraft anymore, uh, but they were much more versatile and practical. They were referred to as 1819s and I think UC-81s. They're a five-seated aircraft. They have uh, a 300 horsepower Lycoming, which gives it a useful load of about 1,200 pounds, so you can put five people in it and nearly full fuel and uh, fly comfortably. They were sort of an upscale market at that time. Uh, they were also sold to various airlines. There was uh, the Alaskan Airline, the Wien Airline, which is also up in Alaska, and I think an airline out of Nome, Alaska, used these as their feeder aircraft. This was in the late 40s, early 50s, and uh, some of them were used all the way through the late 50s. The uh, performance of these uh, old aircraft is uh, uh, less than stellar when it comes to airspeed. You can see this is a big airplane. It has a lot of drag, and even though it has 300 horsepower and uh, can lift a big heavy load, it doesn't go through the air very fast. The uh, airplane is more conducive to grass fields where it makes a beautiful stall landing. Uh, on blacktop, it's a little tricky with the stall landings and uh, wheel landings are much more appropriate as far as I'm concerned. The uh, plane on cross country, you can see the big wings on this airplane uh, and Going cross country on a nice clear day like today where you have convection currents across the Midwest, it kind of flies like you'd imagine a whale swimming through the water. Every time it hits a convection current, it wants to go up very quickly. And when it flies out of that convection current, it wants to drop very quickly. So having a nice level flight pattern is, is a little difficult with this plane on a cross country, on a long cross country, it keeps you busy. Stinsons are big and heavy and they fly like a heavy airplane, but yet they also fly like uh, any conventional, conventional gear aircraft, such as a Cessna 140. I have a Cessna 140 that loves to fly off of grass like this also. And really this plane flies like a Cessna 140, but you gotta use more muscle to fly it. Uh, it uh, and you gotta plan ahead a little faster. Even though it is slow, you gotta anticipate, you gotta trim and you've got to keep the airplane, uh, you've got to stay ahead of the airplane. The uh, performance of this old airplane uh, is, is much like an older airplane. Uh, you, you, short field uh, landings and takeoffs are 
uh, very easy with it. It's got a big engine, it's got a big propeller. You have to know where the stall speed is. You can come in at 1.3 above that and uh, on a steep approach and flare at the last minute, and you can land this in a very short field. You can see the grass runway here. This is uh, about 1,800 feet, and uh, I'd say I used probably maybe a two thirds of the runway uh, when I come in and land. Ticking off is about the same. Cruise is not very fast at about 115, 120 miles per hour, and that's burning 14 gallons per hour. So you can see it's not a uh, uh, real efficient airplane when it comes to fuel. But uh, if you have a full load and you want to make a short field uh, landing, you have to be very careful with uh, the stall speed and very careful with the power. Uh, and with a full load, I'd be hesitant to uh, try and get off the field here, especially on a hot day like this. Now, see, you, you have to use good judgment when you fly these old airplanes. The uh, Stinson V-77 is traditionally known as the gull wing, and uh, as you can tell from the front, the wings are very thick, about a third of the way out on the wing, and, and create this characteristic seagull-like design to the wing. It creates a lot of drag, but it also creates a tremendous amount of lift. From the rear, you can definitely get an idea of what the gull wing looks like. Uh, it's got that big bulge, kind of like it's got a joint in the middle of the wing. Uh, and uh, how thick it is, that's where the fuel tanks are located. And uh, they're very thick and create a tremendous amount of drag. And in association with that drag, it also creates a tremendous, tremendous amount of lift, which allows it to be utilized on the short field uh, strips like we have here. Another unique aspect of this old airplane is the flap mechanism. Uh, it's not the typical electric or spring operated uh, flap. Uh, it is a vacuum operated flap system that operates off of a vacuum tank in the back of the airplane that's operated off the vacuum generated off of the engine. And uh, the flaps are not incremental. They come down all or nothing. And when you put the flaps down, they come down. And uh, so you have all flaps or no flaps. But it's a pretty big flap here. Uh, but you can feel the vacuum on, on, the, uh, on the flap itself, which is uh, in the tank uh, in the back of the airplane. So the flaps help slow the airplane down. They actually add more lift to this giant wing so that the airplane can land slower and in a shorter distance. So another reason why this aircraft was so much utilized for short field landings up in Alaska. There's something else you might be interested in with this airplane, that's these uh, beautiful wheel pants. These aren't part of the original aircraft. These uh, were added later. When this was a uh, military aircraft back in the 40s in England, they didn't have wheel pants on. Some people say, well, they put it on because it makes the airplane go faster. Well, I've had the wheel pants on, I've had the wheel pants off, and the airspeed stays the same. It really doesn't change much at all. But what the wheel pants do is make the airplane look a lot more attractive. It's sort of an aesthetic thing. There's a lot of stress that goes through there when you make a landing, because you bounce down a little harder than necessary sometimes, and that causes these wheel pants to jostle about. And we had some trouble with cracking. Uh, down at the bottom at the attachment points here, since these are only fiberglass. Uh, we've had it redone now, and, and uh, uh, Roy Redman up in, in Minnesota has actually put a new attachment bracket on the uh, wheel pants, and it seems to have solved the problem completely. Uh, this uh, Stinson also has a, a kind of a, a entry ladder here that everybody comments about. It uh, sort of sticks out of the side of the airplane, and people expect it to retract back into the airplane. However, uh, that isn't the case with this old Stinson. It just hangs out here and, again, produces more drag and slows the airplane down. But it's very necessary because it would be pretty hard, for me at least, to climb up here and get in the airplane 
without this little ladder. So the ladder is attached and built right onto the airplane, which to me is a good idea. And as we come to the back of the airplane, we have this big tail section back here with the big elevators and the big rudder and uh, a beautiful logo here. And the logo has kind of a story to it. Some Stinsons have the arrow pointing forward and some Stinsons have the arrow pointing up on this bow and arrow of the Stinson logo. And we did uh, a lot of research and I'm not sure we came up with the correct logo, but we came up with the one we liked the, the best. And my daughter did most of this research on the internet. And she found this stencil and the last annual of this airplane, I took it up to Roy Redman up in Minnesota. Uh, who did my last annual, and he's sort of a Stinson man too. In fact, uh, he used to have a V-77 just like this. And he was saying, where in the world did you get that logo? He says, I designed that logo. And uh, uh, he says, I haven't seen one of those for a while. Uh, so it was very interesting to hear him kind of give me this uh, impression of this logo and how it, uh, where it went and how it got where it is and how it got back to Roy Redman's shop is sort of interesting and a big unknown in my mind. Another thing that uh, is kind of interesting in this old airplane is uh, looking at it on the inside. And you can do that right here with this battery access door. You can actually see what we've done to the inside of the aircraft. And it all looks like brand new in there. Uh, it's got new plywood bulkheads and the uh, tank that operates the flaps, the vacuum tank is back in there and it's all painted up real nice. All the wiring in the aircraft has been completely redone, brand new with new uh, circuit breakers and fuses. And so the airplane is uh, like a new aircraft. Some of the radios are back here. Some of them are underneath the seat. Uh, most of them are up on the instrument panel, of course. And even though this airplane uh, kind of looks like it did back when it was first put together, except for the paint job and the wheel pants, the instrument panel, as you'll see, is, is a lot different. They, uh, we have put uh, modern avionics and communication equipment in it. It's got a storm scope, an ADF, a GPS. It's got an HSI and a transponder and two navcoms and so it's fully equipped and we can fly this in the clouds uh, if we're qualified the airplane is qualified uh, and uh, so it's a very versatile but slow airplane that's comfortable to fly okay the instrument panel is uh, pretty much all non-stock i mean the slope of the instrument the engine instruments down there are, uh, that was original. The gauges themselves are not original. The uh, throttle and mixture and prop control are not original. The uh, military version had the throttle on the side. Uh, this is, so this has been civilianized. And what you see are the circuit breakers up on the left on the uh, diagonal panel. You got the magneto, you got the master switch and all the electrical switches here behind the uh, headset. Uh, on the other side, you have the flap, flap panel over here. This is flap ups, flaps down, carburetor heat, cabin heat. Uh, I'll put these back on the seat. And the instruments up on top are typical navigation instruments, and it's, it's full instrument. I love looking at old airplanes that are truly original. But uh, for practicality, for me to uh, travel and uh, fly in the sky in today's environment, I think that the radios need to be updated and you need to be able to fly into airports that require a transponder and require a radio that works well. The trim uh, on this airplane is a vital piece of uh, equipment. Uh, the, as I was saying, it kind of flies through the air on a nice clear day like a whale goes through the water and you got to continuously be trimming it up, trimming it down. Also, when you put the flaps down, you really have to retrim the aircraft quickly because it gets real heavy if you don't. And uh, to make the passengers more comfortable, you have to anticipate it or you get a pitch change that sort of frightens everybody. The zippers up on the ceiling are access points for uh, inspections. 
and to uh, make sure the cables and pulleys and all the equipment that behind the upholstery is okay. The seat is a big seat for two people, but a small seat for three big people. Uh, we only have two seat belts in the back to make it a four-place airplane. Now, one thing that people find interesting in this whole airplane is, is the wood uh, trim to the windows and, and some of the paneling that's been done in wood. Uh, I don't really have any idea. I'm sure that when it was military, there was very little wood in it. Uh, or there was that wasn't well taken care of but I think the wood uh, trim on the windows and the wood trim around the door here uh, adds, adds just a, a sparkle of quality to the airplane that uh, kind of is reminiscent of the age of the aircraft. The engine on this uh, old Stenson is uh, the uh, Lycoming R680. It has 300 horsepower. It's got a variable speed propeller to it and uh, provides all the power you need to haul five people plus full tanks. Uh, the engine uh, is a very reliable old uh, Lycoming that uh, runs well. If you let it sit for a couple weeks before uh, uh, you run it, uh, it will blow some oil out on the wheel covers and you gotta wipe that down. But if you run it regularly, it blows very little oil, uses very little oil. The engine uh, was completely rebuilt to zero time by El Holloway in uh, Northern California. Uh, did a beautiful job with the engine. He's, he's sort of a guru on these old round engines. If you go from, uh, say, a Cessna 182 or a Cessna 172, where you've got the inline Lycoming or Continental engines that run pretty smooth, these old things vibrate. And uh, you got to get used to that sort of big round engine feel when you fly these things. As far as uh, power response uh, with these engines, I, I don't think there's that much difference. You know, you push the throttle forward and it goes. It's, it doesn't matter which airplane you fly. I, I was really lucky to get this old airplane. Uh, found it in Renton Field in, 19, uh, uh, in 2005. It was sitting in the grass between a couple hangars and my son and I were driving around and at that time I had flown the Waco into uh, Renton Field on one of my long cross countries uh, and uh, I told my son, I said, somebody's got to salvage that old beautiful airplane uh, from the grass that's growing up around it. And so we were able to talk to uh, uh, Russell Williams who owned the airplane prior to me and had planned to restore it, but had too many other projects, too many other irons in the fire. So I feel pretty lucky in being able to get this uh, beautiful old Stinson from Russell. And uh, I'm real happy with it and real proud of it.